Let's go! Ethereum has crushed its previous all-time high and reached a price of about $3,200 before retracing a little bit. Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin for more than a week now and it does not look like it wants to slow down. So today I will be sharing some exciting news all about Ethereum and also crypto in general. I will be going over some information about the new Ethereum 2.0 testnet that was launched to try out a different method of implementing it which could actually bring its arrival sooner than expected if it is chosen. I will also be covering a new price prediction for Ethereum that has been made by a well-known market research firm and the reasons they use to support that prediction, some interesting information about Ethereum adoption and some other crypto stuff as well. So before I begin, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos like this in the future. With Ethereum seeing these impressive gains already and uh, perhaps even seeing far, far greater gains in the very short term here, I would not be surprised to start seeing some money start flooding back towards mid-size and smaller altcoins again later this month. So I will be keeping you all updated on the best altcoins as well as how I am actively trading and everything else you need to know. Let's get started with a look into the Stackload testnet, which was created to try out a different method of implementing Ethereum 2.0. The Ethereum developers made it clear that this was a super experimental test to just see how it worked, but it is interesting nonetheless. One of the researchers involved noted that it was a big step forwards towards the merge because of the fact that it involved seven clients on the testnet rather than the two that had been previously accomplished. To understand this next part, I need to give you a quick summary of how Ethereum works and will work in the future. When it was created, Ethereum was made using proof of work, meaning that people use hardware to validate transactions and create new blocks by solving very complex cryptographic puzzles. The Ethereum 2.0 network that went live in December but is not currently functional uses proof of stake, meaning that people lock up Ethereum to be able to validate transactions and add new blocks. The initial plan by the Ethereum developers was to just keep adding updates to the Ethereum 2.0 network until it was functional and ready to replace Ethereum 1.0 at which point the transition would happen. The new approach that the Stecklo testnet was created for however would combine the Ethereum 2.0 and the 1.0 networks with transactions occurring on 1.0 and finalization of the transactions being completed on the 2.0 network with the more efficient proof of stake consensus. Stecklo is only meant to last around a day or so, so we should be hearing the results of how it all went in the next week. And if they are interesting, I will definitely let you all know about them because if this method is successful, it is possible that the merge could happen even sooner than expected. On the other hand, even if it is not successful, it is good that the Ethereum developers are looking at all of the different possibilities to find the best solution to scaling for the future. With that in mind, Let's move on to a price prediction by Fundstrat, an independent market research firm that provides analysis to both institutions as well as individual investors. The firm has been bullish on Bitcoin for a while now and has previously announced a target of $100,000 for it by the end of this bull market. That is a fairly commonly chosen target among a lot of people involved in crypto, but their Ethereum target has drawn some attention because they have announced that they believe it will be hitting $10,500 per coin during 2021 and that it is still cheap at its current all-time high. There are a couple of reasons they have given for this belief. First is the gains that Ethereum has made against Bitcoin recently. Second is the shift in the crypto narrative from Bitcoin being the complete center of attention to a focus on decentralized finance and Web3 applications. They also took into account the fact that Ethereum generates three times the fees of Bitcoin while being roughly a third of the market cap. They view that similarly to how they view companies, with fees being seen as revenue that can be used for buybacks and that once EIP-1559 is implemented, burnt fees will outpace the supply increase from staking rewards. One other metric they looked at was the value settled on Ethereum daily, which is currently around $30.5 billion. That is far more than Bitcoin or any other blockchain, and for context, PayPal only settles $2.5 billion per day. Before I move on to some more news, I want to thank Y-Axis for sponsoring this video, and today I want to share this project with you. So Y-Axis is a meta yield farming aggregator that is able to switch the underlying assets when deploying strategies. 
The YAX token is used for governance of the DAO, which votes on which yield farming strategies will be utilized by the platform. The main feature of the platform is called the Meta Vault and is where you deposit assets such as stable coins to earn on them. One of the biggest benefits of using Y Axis is that you do not have to do all of the research to go and look for the best new yield farms and compare them just to figure out which ones are the best. You can simply deposit and then start earning passively, then withdraw your earnings at any time. Currently, the APY on the Meta Vault is 77%, which is pretty good for not having to do anything at all. Another way you can earn with Y Axis is through staking the native token at Y Axis coin. The APY for this is significantly higher because it takes into account the daily compounding of yield. Even without compounding, you would still earn almost 300% annually. Y Axis takes security very seriously and underwent the security analysis by Quant Stamp, and they also have several bug bounties active to encourage people to actively search for any security vulnerabilities in return for a reward. Currently, the protocol has more than $200 million in total value locked, so it is nice to see them being proactive about keeping that safe. Moving back to the news, something interesting to note about this most recent Ethereum rally to new highs is that it is appearing to be driven by spot volume, meaning that people are buying actual Ethereum rather than longing it on perpetual futures. This is able to be known by looking at funding rates for Ethereum, which are the rates people pay to keep longs open on perpetual futures, which are the futures with no expiration date. So in other words, the stuff you use on Bybit and Femex. When a lot of people are long an asset, the funding rates increase. During this move upwards, funding rates for Ethereum have remained flat and even went negative on a couple of exchanges. Seeing more people buying spot Ethereum generally means that they are buying to hold for a longer period of time, which would make sense with EIP-1559 and Ethereum 2.0 coming, as people will of course want a profit off of those catalysts. Next, I want to note something that has shown a bit of maturity in the crypto space. Yesterday, Berkshire and Hathaway had their annual shareholders meeting and Warren Buffett and the vice chair of the company, Charlie Munger, answered questions during an interview. When asked about Bitcoin and crypto, Buffett said he would pass on the question, but Munger went ahead and said, of course I hate the Bitcoin success and I don't welcome a currency that's so useful to kidnappers and extortionists and so forth. Nor do I like just shuffling out a few extra billions and billions and billions of dollars to somebody who just invented a new financial product out of thin air. And the whole development is disgusting and contrary to the interest of civilization. That is a very critical view of crypto and incorrect in several ways. But in the past, having such a prominent figure in traditional finance would have almost certainly caused a dip in Bitcoin and the market in general. But the opposite actually happened as Bitcoin, Ethereum and the markets in general have continued upwards, which just goes to show that crypto is definitely maturing. Last but not least, the creator of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, has become a crypto billionaire at the age of 27 as Ethereum has passed $3,000. So that is nice for him. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.